Hey everybody, you know it, Jig and Jerry here, doing the thing at the Mount Pleasant Pier, fishing for the sheephead, and as you can tell here, the sheephead have been getting quite small. Yep, that's right, this time you have the small ones piled in, and they're faster and quicker than the big ones, and they will grab every bait they can get a hold of, even though it hasn't been going hardcore, um, they've been out there. But hey, in this episode, uh, I'm going to run into some decent trout and a flounder and I'm going to show you how I cook them because uh, I've had a lot of inquiries people have been asking hey Jerry can you show us how you cook your fish well I'll tell you what I've decided to go ahead and do just that so uh, let's get rolling all right hey guys Dick and Jerry Mount Pleasant Pier 20 inch trout on mud minnow so mud minnows are working, 20 ounce trout on board, did a really good job. Let me get them uh, unhooked here. Oh, he's going to beat me up. Here you go, guys. Oh, 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 oh. He wants to fight. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to fit him. That's a good eater. Let's see if we can get some more. Catch y'all later. Now he's definitely coming home on their dinner table. Look at that. He'll be one of the ones we're filleting, guys. Why do you need help? Now that's Robbie on the side of me. He's one of the pier employees that works the pier uh, every now and then, and he came over uh, to give me a hand, which helps every single time they come up and uh, check on you. Uh, they're available uh, on and off to help you out. And in this case, he's helping me out, uh, saving me a little bit of work out here, pulling this uh, fish up. He might make 14. He's going to be close. He's probably 14. 14 and a half. Nah, 13 three quarters at the moment. 14 and a half. Fifteen. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't caught enough lately to, to have <laughs> to a To gauge, huh? You want to throw him back? No. No, oh, okay. That's dinner. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Jig and Jerry. You already seen a 20 inch trout. Now I got a 15 inch flounder. Let me get a better clip up here so you can see him. I don't want him to wear me out. Woohoo! Now I got two sandwiches. Two! All right, later. And of course, that will be the flounder we're gonna fillet and cook. Let's get to the house.
Okay, that was the trout. Now let's get on the flounder. I'm about to do is pretty simple. Now as you see we have our filleted fish. It's cut up in chunks. Uh, I split it up in fours and make uh, a fish stick out of it. Boneless. Now I'm going to take a bowl. I, I love using Progresso Italian style breadcrumbs. Uh, finely diced. Start with that and I'm going to use about three quarters to a half a cup because I'm only made cooking one trout and one flounder here. So that's not going to make, you know, a ton of fish. So I'm going to make just enough to batter up my fish. So I'm going to go about three quarters of a cup, toss it in there. Next, cornmeal. Same amount, about three quarters of the cup. You want equal part of uh, the cornmeal versus the uh, breadcrumbs. Okay. Now, to season this up, it's really simple. I don't measure. So do it to your taste. Curry powder. It's great. Back it up. Give it a good shake. Get the top dusted good. And that's what I do. I just dust it right across the top. Now, if you like your fish a little spicy, you don't want to use pepper or anything, I'll tell you what really sneaks up a little good kick in the fish fry is a little ginger. Uh, powdered ginger works great. So I'm going to toss a little powdered ginger in this mixture. Here we go. Now, garlic powder. Gotta have some garlic. Oh, bam. That's what they say, bam, isn't it? And seasoned salt. Use a brand seasoned salt that you like. This is the brand that I like. I think it's great. Dust the top really good. Once you get the top dusted, now, once you have that mixed in there, take your fork or whisk, whip it all up. Take it around a little bit, beat it up, get it whipped up really good so it's all mixed well. After that's mixed up, now, take you a good level, another little mixing bowl here. And uh, for the amount of fish I'm going to use, three fresh eggs. Now, I'm lucky because I have my own chickens, and my own chickens give me fresh eggs. All right, got my fresh eggs, take your fork or whisk, whatever works for you. Whip it up. Now, 
good deal. Now, it's real simple. With this, what I like to do That's what your fish are going to soak in. Now grab a couple of pieces right away. Get them in that egg. That's flounder. That's trout. Get them in that egg. Now why it's in that egg, I'm going to toss it around, move it around, get it coated really good. Now, you can do this one way. You can go right from the egg Drip the excess eggs off, egg off, put it in your mixture and cover it, or, and go right to the, the hot oil, which I'll get to here in a moment, or you can do like this, and I like doing this. Grab your cookie sheet, or plate, or plate. Okay, now, what I like to do, you get that egg coated on there really well. See that? Drip the excess egg off, put it in your mixture. Shake it around. Get it going good. Get her dusty good. Because that is how that's going to work. And take her, lift her out slowly, not fast. You're going to take knock off too much of the mixture and get it laid in a pan. Get you another one in your egg, nice and coated, drip off the excess, get it in your mixture, shake it around, do that, get it coated really good, and very softly raise it out slow, get it on your pan. You do that with all your fish, the egg, drip it off, get it in your mixture, Coat it really well, break it out slowly, lay it down. Now, that gives me my start to fry in the hot oil. And uh, it's that simple. Uh, cleaning part, eh, I don't know about that. Never did like cleaning fish, sure like catching them. But uh, now we're gonna take these to the hot oil. I'm gonna show you what oil I use and how we cook them and uh, you know, everybody says, well, how many minutes do you cook your fish in hot oil for? Well, remember this. It's just simple. It depends on the size of the piece. Since these pieces are all relatively the same size, it's going to be around the same time. But uh, the thicker the fish that you're, that you're frying, the longer it's going to have to cook. So, anyway, let's head to the oil. All right, the hot oil. Yep, this is the old conventional way of uh, frying a lot. Now, if you have a fry daddy, that uh, works too. In this case, I'm using hot canola oil here. And the reason why I'm using hot canola oil is because it does not change the flavor of the fish. Uh, hardly at all. It's a very light flavor. And not only that, it's not that fattening whatsoever so it's a lot better for you using uh, hot canola oil so let's get rolling with this <clears throat> all right now again we have our fish now your hot oil uh, I'm not going to get into the temperatures of oil you should uh, I'm s suppose everybody already knows that by now but you want it hot enough to fry the fry the fish correctly and thoroughly all the way through Every stove is different. Everybody thinks that every stove gets the same temperature. Well, through the years, I've learned that I have some stoves that just cook extra. Just the burners are really, really hot, and you have to lower it down to a medium heat to get the right temperature. So just test your oil. Make sure your oil is, is ready and prepared uh, to cook your fish. In this case, now I have my fish. I have my hot oil. Uh, I'm going to take my fish gently with the coating and I'm going to take them and I'm going to start laying them in the hot oil. All right. Now, 
Now we'll visit those fish in a few minutes. And one thing I will recommend, you definitely don't want to overcook your fish. If you overcook your fish, they turn out like leather. Now in this case, I'm going to cover my pan. Uh, I'm not using a fry daddy, so just in case I get some oil spatter, I'm not wiping up the kitchen for two days. Anyway, we'll visit this again in a few minutes. fish look golden brown. Look at that. Mm, tender. Look at that. Tender. Just like that. Oh. Mmm. I'm going to eat till my throat's full. Now, I usually make homemade french fries because I love my fish and chips with this, but I'm not going to get into the french fry part. Uh, suggest just go ahead and go buy a frozen bag and throw them in the oven. <laughs> I like to make mine from the potatoes and the hot oil and all that too, but we're dealing with fish today. So let's take these. I'm going to show you how to make homemade tartar sauce, my own little recipe uh, for these, which goes great. All right, let's move along. All right, you ready? Now... This simple. Tartar sauce is not a complicated task and it complements this recipe great. Um, what I do is I take a little bit of sweet relish. Now sweet relish can be a little watery so you want to make sure that you squeeze that extra juice out of your sweet relish. Other than that your tartar sauce is going to be slimy. We don't want slime. Mayonnaise. Uh, use whatever brand mayonnaise you, you like. Uh, I will warn you, if you use something um, that's not exactly mayonnaise, but more of a salad dressing, um, it, it's going to have a more of a vinegary, vinegary taste, and it could create problems. I prefer Duke's mayonnaise, um, whole mayonnaise. It has a great flavor, and it works great for this recipe. Uh, a little bit of dill, fresh ground dill, uh, dried dill, however you want it. Um, a touch of curry powder and my seasoned salt. And the reason I use the same seasoned salt in this recipe is because it complements the fish because it's already in the fish. So it helps back it up a little bit. But anyway, all you're going to do is you're going to take that relish. You're going to throw it in your mayo. Now, you can add as much as you like for your liking. I don't like a whole lot. I like just enough to complement it. Again, I dust the top, a little bit of curry across the top. Got to back it up like that to get it to reheat. Dill. And of course, dust it. Dust it. Season salt. Not too much. Don't do too much. It'll make it really salty and nasty. And mix her up. Now you can make this the night before and let it sit. It actually marinades. But sometimes to me, it, you have to use a little bit less if you're going to do that because it will really absorb all that and get really strong. Um, since I'm making it on the spot, eh, I tend to want a little heavier. Now that makes a good flavor. So there you go. Jerry's homemade tartar sauce for his fish with these little minor little ingredients. I'll tell you, try it. I love it. Unless I got bad taste. You never know, I might have bad taste. But uh, now I'm going to eat me some fish. Oh. 
All right, well, I'll tell you what, you know, the cook gets to test his food first. So before I turn this into the meal for my evening, I'm going to go ahead and take one of these tender bad boys here and some of the tartar sauce. That's right. I'm going to, oh, look at that. You see how tender, white, and fluffy that is? Nice layer, nice crust, let's see. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Now this reminds me of why I like to catch flounder and definitely spotted sea trout because hmm, I don't think I can get no oh, I'm not gonna let the rest of the household know I made this yet I'll have to tell them I haven't cooked it yet anyway see y'all next time on the Jig and Jerry show don't forget if you like what you see subscribe this is button down there go ahead click it and uh, leave me a couple of messages let me know what you want to see you know there are some little things out there that uh, we can add into the show uh, depending on your request so until next time good luck out there and have fun fishing guys later <laughs>